there were some trade talks surrounding perhaps Toronto Maple Leafs Phil Kessel and also some news surrounding that their fourth overall selection may be in play. What's the latest? Well, Kyle Dubas, the assistant general manager, was the one who talked about, you know, if they got the right potential offer, they would consider moving out of the four spot. And Don Maloney said the same thing on the same day. He said they'd had three calls about number three, but they weren't sure what they're going to do. I mean, that's normal. I, everybody listens. Uh, when it comes to Kessel, and you're right, I was very careful because things got out of control on me on Friday. But um, the thing about Kessel is I just get the sense that now we're getting to a serious point where if teams out there are going to do it, they're beginning to call the Maple Leafs and saying, okay, if we want to do Phil Kessel, what is it going to take? And the reason I don't think it's very far along yet is because from what I can tell, nobody's gone to Kessel yet and said, you know, what do you think about this? He has a no-trade list. There's eight teams he can go to. But you never know. Like, I think – sometimes I think those lists, Gord, aren't worth the paper that they're printed on. Things change in people's lives. They might look at situations differently now than maybe they did then. And if he's going to be traded, you know that he's going to have to be on board. Well, absolutely. First about the, the no-trade list, it seems like once somebody gets them, then the agents just keep going after them because it keeps an element of control for the player. But he can, of course – say I'll go anywhere or, or, mm -hmm. or add to it along the way. And in this case, the trial balloon, let's face it, the trade deadline's not the trade deadline. The trade deadline's the draft and up till July 1st. So this is the time when teams are figuring out the whole salary cap situation. And, uh, you know, and I heard you talk about it as well, Elliot. And it's interesting. So people right away go, wow, can you get the third overall pick for Kessel? Can you get a first, whatever it may be? And all I can, if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, if you want to look at it, they were months away from losing both Phil Kessel and Dion Phaneuf as unrestricted free agents. So in some ways, if you get anything, that's better than the, the plight two years ago when things were going well and you signed these guys long-term. Or, throw it out there, if you just get two teams bidding, then all of a sudden, if you're Kyle Dubas and Brendan Shanahan and company, then maybe you get something a lot more palatable back. It's a it's a real interesting animal, what 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 his actual trade value is. Kessel, seven years left on that eight-year, $64 million deal, an annual average value of $8 million cap hit. 30-plus goal score in four of the last six years. So what teams, if you guys were going to make your best guess, are picking up the phone and interested in Phil Kessel? Because let's face it, in my opinion, he gets just kicked around here and does not get the credit he deserved. He is one of the most elite goal scorers within the National Hockey League. It's going to be a big ticket for a big team. Well, you know, the way I look at it is this, Leah. He hasn't missed a game either in five years, and that in this league is not easy. Last year was a down year for him. He scored 25 goals. I, To me, it's a team that thinks it can win in the next three to four years. Because if you look at the numbers, statistically, once a guy, he's 27 now, once a score hits 31 years old, the numbers tend to drop. So I think you're looking at a team that thinks he can make a difference for them in the next three to four years. You know, the, the first team that jumped into my head was Nashville because they've had interest in him in the past. Um, when Toronto got him, Nashville was the other team looking at getting him. But I'm not convinced that Nashville is the place now for a couple of reasons. Number one, they have contracts in the next year they've got to do for Seth Jones and Philip Forsberg. Um, and, you know, I just think I'm not sure that Nashville is the kind of fit that I thought they might have been when I first first researched it. Another team I might wonder about would be a team, and I'm not saying that they're in. Please, I'm not saying that they're in. But I wonder if a team like St. Louis, I mean, if you look at St. Louis, they've got Brett Hull working for them. Do you not see any kind of similarities between the way that Brett Hull was perceived and the way that Phil Kessel was perceived? So I wonder if if that kind of institutional knowledge in the organization would make... The other thing, too, is St. Louis is a budget team. Can they do Tarasenko and Hull and everything... Uh, Tarasenko and Kessel and everything that comes with that? That would be my question. You know, and of course, Nashville, you go back there, that, that was the other team in the bidding, so... I still think, yeah, if they have the money, they would try to make it work. Every team, to answer your question, Lee, would, would want... I mean, Phil Kessel is an automatic. Yeah. He's a 30-goal scorer who doesn't get hurt. I don't really think I got kicked around in Toronto. I just think it's 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 a funny thing that he doesn't mind this fishbowl in Toronto. He seems to handle it quite well, but mm -hmm. he doesn't seem to embrace it either. So it's kind of strange that way. So if it's time to go somewhere else... Uh, now, to me, Vancouver, I know they have cap issues, okay, in that, but I mean... They need more balanced scoring. What about something off? Does he does he say, you know what? 
Florida Panthers. For example, just, just say I, I want to do something different. They've got money. I don't, you know, I want to. I get think him. that's. I think he'd love to go there. You know, the other team. I I, I kind of wonder if you know, just with Burke there, and I don't think Burke is his day to day invested. Like I think Brad Tree Living really has a a strong handle on that team. But I wonder if a team like Calgary would have any interest just with Burke's history with him.